patience with that. Now. Yes. Okay, we got 64 victims. I, I mean, students. I'm sorry. Oops, I said the wrong word. I hope nobody heard that. Nobody heard that, right? See, when you got the, when you got the audio on, you can't tell. You can't start talking about what you really think about the students, right? Yeah. Oh, oops. Now, oh, no, oh, no. It's on now. Oh, no. Oops. It's not like you know when your grandpa's in the room and you're talking about it. And you know, and then and here we have somebody, Dwight Jones, looking looking dapper, looking good there. There we go. We should have a dress code. I like this right here. Any student who comes up on here should have a proper dress code like this right here, like Dwight here. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. You got me motivated. I'm, I'm, I have to go to a dress code. I'm, uh, whoops, I need fancier, fancier threads in myself. Okay. So, but seriously, one, one time, uh, you know, the, the, um, the companies, the Expo, Engineering Engine Expo comes by, and, and that's a good thing. And uh, I, I remember I was in blue jeans and whatever, talking to a group of students in the hall, and they were all in their suits and ties looking like you right there, and all messed up. And, uh, one of the students asked me, hey, Professor Vic, how, how come you know, we're all dressed up in suits and ties and you look like a slob? And I said, well, I got one good reason, son. I got a job and you don't. OK, so <laughs> there's a good reason for you right there. Yeah. Anyway, anyway um, we got 150, I think, we're enrolled right now. Generally, 1115 is our start time. Uh, today, I'm just going to sit around and uh, wait a few minutes, let people have a chance to try to log in um, to the site. So, uh, you know, we'll start just a couple of minutes uh, late today or a minute or two late, give people a chance to log in there. Things will be recorded also. Anyway, how are you all doing? Good, I hope. Good, good. Um, in terms of chats, I the way we're doing it here is is uh, I'll, I'll be doing lectures, and I got my two GTAs here. And they'll they'll introduce. They'll be handling chats throughout. So some of the, I've found with a lot of students like this, sometimes you might get a hundred chats, and there's you know no way I can't keep my concentration up. I can't do two things at once. You know I'm old. I'm not like multitasking like you guys. You know, if I can do one thing at a time, I'm I'm lucky. All right. Um, so hopefully your chats will get answered if you have a question throughout the course, you know. And if I share a screen. Mm -hmm.
Oh, we got 117. Anybody? Else? All right. Well, again, be, please be ready for by one by 11:15 every time. But uh, I guess we'll get started here today. And and my name is Brian Vick. And um, welcome to the course. Uh, let me let me direct us to the Canvas site. We will do that. Share screen. If I share screen, share. Then if I go to Canvas. And here's home base for us right here. Um, Canvas maybe is not perfect and stuff, but it is home base. This is where we get to share the information. Um, we, you know, first major time through this course with Zoom, we had stuff all over the place. We've made an attempt to at least improve the, the, the course site here. You see that you'll have a topic here and we'll have little blue things like instructor to go together, Zoom lectures, course pages, and et cetera, stuff like that, to try to make it easier for you all to visualize what's on this course page. So I'm gonna talk about some of this today. We won't talk about all of it. Some of it I'll talk about as, as um, becomes important. But let's start with the team. I'm Dr. Brian Vick. Okay, and there's, I. nobody comes by my office anymore, but because uh, of the thing, but there we go. There's my email. Um, I have two GTAs, Jason Kim, there's his email, and Varsa Swami, and there's her email. And so you saw, a, you saw what I looked like, and if, I'd like Jason and, and Varsa to come on, or Jason, maybe you pop into, the, pop into the scene there and say hello to the students, so they see what you look like. Can you? Yeah, my thing's uh, taking a little bit. Okay. I think I was just complimenting you. Oh, I should have done that. What's that? Oh, oh, yeah. oh okay. Oh, there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll tell you what. Let's let's just do it that way. Let me go back to um. Let me go back to then. Uh, the, zoom. the zoom. Yeah, the zoom thing. All right. Mm -hmm. I got it. What the hell? What's going on with this? Why can't I can't get back to Zoom? Okay. You could just see yourself. I know, but I, I want to <laughs> I want to post it to me. Well, you're on camera right now. Me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, you do come up here. Oh. Yeah. I, I couldn't see it. How come I can't? When I'm like that, I'm on camera. Yeah, yeah. When, whenever you're presenting, you're actually on camera too. It, it was. It looks like this. Yeah. Okay, well, so, screen, so, so I'll go. Varsha, Varsha is standing behind me, so let her introduce herself. Hi, guys. I'm Varsha, and you guys can, uh, all the things related to SSDs, the homework quizzes, and quizzes in general, you guys can reach out to me. We do have somebody else for the other things, but any of the general questions, you can reach out to all three of us. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and invite Jason right now. Okay. Anyway, that's Ms. Varsha. She's new to the team. Right. And here comes Jason. He comes around here. He yeah. he is he's been with me for quite a while. So yeah, too too many years. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Jason. I feel, I feel bad for him putting up with me all the time. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm a second year grad student here in ME. I did my undergrad here as well. Took this class back in you know, the 1800s with Dr. Vick, and now I'm on the other side of the table. So sometimes uh, Dr. Vick will give the lectures on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then some weeks, and by some I mean most, you're going to have additional lectures narrated by yours truly. Um, I recommend watching them at night because they can put you to sleep pretty easily. Um, <laughs> so that's a little bit about me and myself, and welcome to the class. Let's have a great semester. Okay, there, there they are. Like, like Jason said, he's been with me for a while. Varsh is new, but I think we should do well. Now, what can they see? Yeah, they can see you. They can okay. see you. And, and one other member of the team. Yeah. <laughs> One other yeah. valuable member of my team, at least, yeah. is is this little beast here. His name is Riley. Mm -hmm. He is a dog. Okay, that's very profound, wasn't it? <laughs> Y'all didn't think he was a snake or something like that. But he is a cockapoo. Oh, Riley, you have to lick me right now. Anyway, he's he's a cockapoo. He's a um, he is a Cocker Spaniel Poodle. The Poodle, the Poodle mixes tend to make good dogs, but he's a darling spirit. And he's he's my little buddy. 
and he helps me. Um, so, introduce your team. Now, what I've done before, and I thought this worked out well, I have 150 students, and my wife is a program advisor, so there could be more. And, um, and to start at least the first day or two, like Friday and Monday, if anyone else, if anyone out there has a, has a pet they want to show, a dog, a cat, etc. Um, some guy I think showed what a, a, a what do you call the thing a bearded dragon and different things. Um, when, you know, in the minute or so before class and maybe a few seconds, you know, half a minute into class, um, next time, please um, feel free to, to show your dog or your animal. A couple of people, you know, they're here at school and they got their their dog at home with their parents and show the picture. But uh, it, it's kind of nice if you, to take a couple minutes up front to to show our our beloved pets. Uh, oh, they want his email? They, is that what they want? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I'll try to get him one. I think one of our dogs, we have three dogs, one of our dogs, they've actually made a, a, a Facebook site for him. <laughs> actually, I think. And uh, my daughter makes some funny videos with the, uh, what do you call those things? TikTok videos with yeah, them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I can share some. I, I think one of them has bad words in it. I don't think I can share that one with you, but uh, that's a couple, <laughs> of them I can share with, a couple of them I can share with you. <laughs> And not that y'all haven't heard bad words, but you know, so it's not that appropriate. Okay, anyway, this is the team. This is the four of us. We're here together. Okay, Riley, um, you, you want to sit on that? You want to sit on that table over there? He's, he's a good boy. Okay. I want to get back to the. Yeah, it's sharing already. Yeah. There, methods and. Oops, that's the, that's the wrong course. Okay, here we go. Lots of information here. Um, and, and we recognize that there's lots of information. That's one thing we talk about. As a matter of fact, that bothers me that there's so much logistics, information, rules to get through before you ever get to word, word one of the course. So what we have done, we have tried to put these in these little categories to make them, this doesn't, you know, it does, doesn't solve the problem for you, but it makes it easier to find if you compare the website last time with stuff just heebie-jeebie. And some professors, you look at their website and eh, there's stuff everywhere and, and they're not in categories and it's hard to find. So by my comments here, I'm, I'm not saying that we, we, we want some kind of an award for, for internet course design, but what this does represent, this improved um, front page represents is the fact that we do recognize that things are more difficult in the Zoom environment and, and we have tried and we know that and we recognize that's more difficult for us and we, have, we are trying and have tried um, to do little things for you guys. For instance, just this little thing about the, the title in here, just making the background blue so you can clearly see that and the distinction between the next title, just little things like that. Again, it's not an award-winning thing, but we, we, we are sensitive and we are trying. Also, as things go on, things are going to change. Things are penciled in. That is, we don't know how the environment and the disease is gonna take us. So um, all of this stuff is subject to change. Probably our names won't. There you go. <clears throat> All right. Let me, um, eh, what do I want to do next? Some course information. Okay. So these are, um, for instance, here in course information. Now, some of these documents, you click on them, at least on my computer, you, you can click on this double arrow thing and make it a, complete page like that. Um, so this is a, you know, fairly long document, six pages. It's got us and it's got some of the material repeated course learning and there's the textbook and all this kind of stuff. Um, and it's a lot to get through at once. So what we've done is we've taken some of the material here that I'm sure you'll be interested in. And if there's anything like that, we definitely won't repeat it in other places. For instance, Grading policy, this might be a good thing to talk about right now. That's embedded in these longer documents, but we've also brought out the grading policy as a one page, easy to think. And that's, a, that's an obvious thing. If, we, if, if the students couldn't find the grading policy, we'd get up 300 emails about it. So, um, and you need to know about that. So we have pulled out that information you can find in the general thing. You can also find it in the assignments stuff, but um, a little one page on grading. So let me talk about the, the important thing is that first thing, but let me just say the grading scale is the standard with the plus and minus thing. Regrading, if you, if you have a, 
issue, just put request for regrade your name and send it to Varsha and said, what you think, you know, you know, or, you know, and, and you know, we want to be concise, you know, you saying, you know, Varsha, Professor Vic is a, uh, is an overbearing idiot. Could you please give me a better grade or whatever you think, you know, don't go on about it. Okay. And no curving of grades and stuff. But let me go to this first thing. Because this, this outlines the topics, the general categories, and also the weighting. You will have some workshops. And those are MATLAB grader workshops. Um, we won't, won't give you any assignment today. The, you know, the last thing I like to do is, is log on to the internet the first day. Hey, my name's Brian Vick and your homework is this. It's like, oh, no, my name's Brian Vick and here's my dog. You know, I like that a lot better, okay. But you will, there'll be, there'll be a good bit of assignments. Your first assignment will be what, the, the next week sometime. Uh, but anyway, well, this is from a MATLAB grader. We will explain that in detail, what that is and how to do it and log it up there. Um, we have approximately, at least our temporary schedule, penciled in approximately 10 of these through the semester and you get to drop the lowest one. Homeworks are, you know, here's a problem and you know, here's a numerical problem of, in mathematics or uh, mechanical or electrical or uh, thermal problem and you solve it. Now, what we do here, we have again about 10 of them. We have at least in mind approximately 10 of them um, that can change and you get to drop the lowest one there also. Um, collecting homework, you know, where you were, it's a, say we have pushing 200 students in this class, we had 400 last time. Collecting homework and going through each one is brutal under this environment. So what we have done is, and we'll tell them more about this, is basically we give you a homework quiz and we ask you things. So at the assignment of the first homework, we'll go into that in more detail, there'll be an assignment quiz. Then there'll be some little class quizzes as we go along. We have approximately, I'd say, about 20 of those in mind. That can change. There might be 18 or 22, but approximately 20. And because there's quite a few, you get to drop the lowest two. And those are basically, um, were you there and was, did you have any brain function during that time? They're not involved. The homeworks can be more involved. It can be, you know, like detail, you'll have a whole week to do it. And little class quizzes, I mean, I think the first one is just like, you know, your professor's name is something or another, I mean, you know, whatever, right, Jason? So, the, uh, and some of them then go into a little bit of technical thing about what it was we just covered in that class. Um, you see something called a project. Notice that, notice that it's heavy, a little over a third of the class weight in terms of, of things, sounds heavy. Um, we got a lot of stuff. I I would I was going to ask Jason. Jason is the man charge of that. He's he is he is the team director of the project, and all emails will go to him. And at least I have scheduled here to ask Jason next class to say a few words about the project, get you oriented. So in Friday's class, maybe you can take a few minutes, and as we go, we'll tell you more about it. But uh, Jason will tell you about that next time. And then we have two standard tests. These are these these are your know, typical midterm and finals. But again, how do we how do we conduct them with this this you know not in person thing where we can't hand you paper, stand there, and you collect paper? Well, we do them in terms of, of these uh, Canvas quizzes. And there'll be a Canvas quiz for the midterm and a Canvas quiz for the final. And there you have how uh, your grades are, are made there, which I'm sure people would have been interested in. Um, Sounds like a lot to do. It is a lot to do. You've got a challenge on your hands here. Okay. Oh. Back to the course information part of this thing. Let's open the syllabus. And I will not pour over every topic, but just give you an overview of what's coming up as, as the weeks pass. You will have, have a, you'll know exactly what every detail is. But we started, today is gonna to be eaten up mostly with this introduction. I might get into a few little things, but um, notice we start off the course with eight days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight days of MATLAB basics and programming in MATLAB. These eight days are basically learning MATLAB. MATLAB is the 
is the uh, software of choice. You will have to have it um, installed. And I think you're going to need MATLAB 2020 or later, 2020 B or, or later. So if you happen to have MATLABs installed from five years ago, please go to the software distribution at Virginia Tech. You get it as a Virginia Tech student, you get it for free and um, just, just install the more recent version of MATLAB. So I, I just want to extend I, on that a little bit. Um, so you, you do need 2020B. If you have an older version, please reinstall because we are going to be using some built-in functions that were introduced in 2020B. So if you don't have that version installed, when you try to run your code, you're going to get some weird error. Um, so just warning you ahead of time to download it now before these errors start to, to prompt up. Okay, somebody have a, a comment there? Yeah, I, yeah. I have a, a question because um, yeah. I installed MATLAB yesterday. Uh, I, I went through the like a uh, syllabus, or I don't know if it was the syllabus, the available information. It said we needed every toolbox. So I went in, because uh, I had already installed uh, MATLAB 2020B, and then, I, and then later on I read, oh, we need every toolbox. So I reinstall it. Did we really need the 20 extra gigabytes or something <laughs> of toolboxes? I mean, you're you're going to need some, I mean, MATLAB has, I have no idea how many functions and commands, tens of thousands perhaps, of which, you know, we're not going to learn tens of the years. So what we need in the, mat, the total MATLAB suite and the total, total perspective of MATLAB is a small fraction. We're going we're gonna to have you use some of the more important things, like there's a command called PLOT, which you could probably suspect what that does, and some things. But there's going to be tens of thousands of commands we don't need. So no, we're not going to need most by the huge majority of them but we're going to call on a few for our specific scientific and numerical purposes in this class. Um, now maybe Jason, if you could, uh, maybe if, if you could uh, write down the toolboxes we actually need for this class, so he doesn't have to eat up, you know, 40 trillion gigabytes of, of memory or something. So, so the reason why we've always recommended downloading all the toolboxes is because what typically happens is um, some people will like Google the problem and then end up on some very obscure MATLAB documentation for some incredibly obscure MATLAB function. And that function happens to be part of a very specific toolbox, which you may not have heard of. So in particular, there is one function that people use like all the time last semester, which comes from the machine learning toolbox. Obviously, we don't do anything in this class related to machine learning, but if you would like to use that function for your own practice, you need to have that toolbox installed. So it's better to have all your bases covered in case you find that you are using functions, if you are using extraneous functions. Now of the 20 toolboxes, I think it's like 20 or something, actually probably a lot more than that. I can guarantee that we use about seven of them. So I can make a list of those. And if you only want to download those, by all means go ahead. But once again, if you don't download all of them, then you're sort of uh, limiting your access to all the functions that you can use and investigate. I wasn't really asking for my sake. I've already downloaded it. It's just that uh, downloading all of that and installing it incapacitated my computer for about two hours. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot. I mean, if you download all the toolboxes, like just the base MATLAB alone takes probably a good like half an hour to install. And then when you add it, on all the toolboxes, the oh, time it, was, it wasn't the download that was the tricky part. It was the install. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. It just incapacitated my computer entirely. I couldn't, I couldn't even copy paste folders while I was doing this. Yeah, it basically eats up all your processing power. But hey, it, I no, think no, you only no. got to do it once. That's a good news. It wasn't my process. It was my disc. Yeah. And, and anyway, you do, you do it. Like Jason said, I think that's the big thing. You bite the bullet, you do it once, and then you have this unbelievable tool at your fingertips with certainly thousands of commands you'll never use or never heard of, but you have, you have access to a state-of-the-art collection of scientific tools so far unmatched in human history. It's, it's really mind-boggling what's at your fingertips here. Um, and if it might cost you two hours to sit and not use your computer, whatever it costs is worth it. And you know you get it. You've already paid for it. I mean, if you had to pay five thousand dollars for this code individually, I'd pay it in a heartbeat. But you all get it. It comes with your um, software engineering package, so you can download it for uh, get it for 
zero dollars. You don't have to pay five thousand. It'd be worth ten thousand dollars if you had to pay it. You know, but whatever. Uh, oh, five thousand dollars. So that's where all my tuition went. Yes, there you go to MATLAB. You actually so so you're yeah you're, you're too clever there. You actually did pay for it. You're right. <laughs> I don't know how much of a part of it. Anyway, you have about eight lectures. Uh, this is now MATLAB runs through the whole program. It's not like we do eight lectures, eight eight classes on MATLAB, and then it's over. No, then we use those beginning and these are, in eight lectures we can do nothing but begin to be, begin the process of you learning MATLAB. But we continue to hone our hone our skills as we go on to calculus, for instance. We will do some really interesting problems in numerical differentiation, numerical integration, and such and some neat applications there, of which you'll need MATLAB again. Then we go, so that's, a, so that's the second major topic. Then we'll go on to linear algebra. Once again, you'll be programming and honing and learning more MATLAB skills as you, and, and you'll learn the, the, the horribly important command of the backslash command there. Do a little curve fitting, which is a subtext. Notice throughout here, oh, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. Then we go on to nonlinear, really hard algebra. You know, in high school, you could solve, you know, a couple of things, and now you've got the nonlinear algebra. Well, MATLAB has tools to handle the most difficult algebra ever. And you'll come out of this class being able to handle um, pretty much algebra of, you know, unlimited complexity. Then, and I like it all, I love all these topics, but one of my favorites is differential equations. And we're just gonna have, we're gonna, rock and roll there we're gonna have a lot of fun with differential equations I like doing differential equations by hand though yeah well i guess i mean you know you got you gotta be you gotta like bow down in awe at isaac newton and what he came up with um you have to really bow down to some of these great scientific forefathers you know uh Henri poincare you know he came up with some stuff in the late 1800s and he had these complicated differential equations and he sort of drew out what he thought their trajectories could be. And it's absolutely amazing. Nobody could figure that out without computers. Um, but there's, so yeah, there's, there's been some brilliant humans that could do it. But we are your typical engineers and we're gonna use the power of MATLAB to help us solve these differential equations and therefore be able to solve really tough problems. Uh, as a matter of fact, as far as ODEs ordinary, now we won't get to partial differential equations in solve math. But in terms of ordinary differential equations, you're going to come out of this course being able to handle any number of simultaneous equations, whether it be one, two, 10,000 simultaneous equations of unlimited complexity and unlimited modeling capability. Um, out of a sophomore course, you know, I'm an old dinosaur and I, we never would have covered that. We didn't have the, we didn't have the software, we didn't have the tools. I had punch cards when I was your age. I mean, I never even heard of a lot of this stuff. And now they're just like homework problems. And it's really mind boggling here. Anyway, we'll get to all that. So that's, that's what's kind of coming up. One other thing about this schedule, note that this, in rather than one week long spring break, spring break has been broken up into five individual spring breaks, spring break days. One on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The Tuesday and Thursday ones don't affect us, but the Monday, Wednesday, Friday ones do. And you can see here. First one is there, et cetera. Um, I guess they're trying to avoid, you know, a spring break. Whippy! Fort Lauderdale, let's all cram together. It's a big COVID party. Yay, Whippy! Well, no, Fort Lauderdale. No, no, no. Everyone goes to Florida. Oh, to Florida? Yes, I want to keep people out of Florida myself. I have a sister there. Oh, uh, yes. As little anyway. as I talk to her, I do care. Anyway, I, I, I guess, you know, the kids don't care. Hell, they have COVID parties. They don't, they don't care. Kids your age. Let's see. Is, yeah. Those are still going on. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally, personally uh, never been to one myself, but I, I read about them. They have COVID parties, you know, a bunch of people get together and the first one to get, get us, be able to get, um, you know, positive COVID tests wins a bunch of money or something. I don't know what it is. Jeez, okay. I, I hope that's a joke, but I, I don't know. know. I read about it, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, um, nobody invites me to any kind of party. It's more or less COVID party, so I don't have to worry about it. Mm. See, I've always been a nerd, right? Okay. 
Um, there's that. So, so that's in a nutshell what we're going to be doing. Basically, some MATLAB programming, some structured programming, get to hopefully really the best we can, and then some really cool applications based on we, we do break them down by the mathematical method, but then we have all sorts of applications in physics. So the applications are really important here and all sorts of cool math and physics. And uh, that's, I, I love math and I love physics. And when you can put them together, like in this course, it's like, it's just like uh, too much fun. I mean, I'm not sure if, if there is such a thing as too much fun, but if it is, it's this, okay. I know, once a nerd, always a nerd. Okay, yeah, yeah, you don't have to tell me, all right. Okay, I know that. Uh, what do we got here? All right. And we got a bunch of in other information at your at your fingertips here, which we'll remind you of periodically as we go through this, how to get to the Zoom lecture. These are some course pages. We need to look at that for next week. Um, we try to remind you in this little section of upcoming assignments so that you know, God, what's due now? And um, this will we'll keep putting in the new assignments each week so that you see your first assignment is there's a practice quiz due um, the 31st and a course policy quiz that's the first graded thing is due the 31st note that everything what we've decided is that anything that's assigned during the week will be due at 11:45 the following sunday we will try to get your assignments to you on mondays so that you'll have effectively a full week to do an assignment a full week to do a quiz something like that the assignments might take a little while but these class quizzes are just Back when we used to meet in person, we'd give it like a five minute quiz. And now you're getting like seven, you know, however minutes a week is to do them or whatever. Um, the homework will take some time. So, but anyway, there you go. Little details we'll remind you as we go along. People try to hand it in at 11.59 all semester long. And uh, you know, whatever. And once we set this closing date at 11.45, I mean, it's just the computer, just canvas doesn't take it anymore. Um, and some other information here is about emails. Okay, like they'll be pushing 200 students, I think, in the class this time. Last time we had almost 400. Well, what would happen is, you know, the email system wasn't that clear. So I'd get an email and I'd get a whole bunch of emails on different things. And then, like, you know, I didn't get to them all. Let's say that night I went out drinking and gambling and carrying on. I came back the next day and then, and then I get another email from the get. I, over a day ago, I sent you an email about rah, 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 you know, oh, dang, I'm still hung over, but I don't know what it is. Anyway, but seriously, your emails are important. Your questions are important. So if you will direct them to the various people, um, I know I, I have just now starting to work with Varsha. I, I, uh, I know Jason's pretty prompt. That doesn't mean they're going to be 24 hour 24 7 there but i know um often jason gives a prompt response right um marcia how, how about you i don't even know her yet. Are, you, are you pretty prompt about answering emails yes, yes. She, she says she is we'll have to see <laughs> she claims she's prompt we'll have to see you know we'll have to see how she does but if you will direct your emails for instance if you have a homework or homework quiz question First of all, direct it to Barsha. She's in charge of that. And, and I'm going to ask her and she said she'll give it. That doesn't mean she's sitting at waiting at her computer will give you an answer in three minutes, but in a reasonable amount of time, say a day or maybe a couple hours, you know, say a day, she will give you a response. Also, it will help in your email as the title. Let's say you have a question about homework two. Put homework two and your name and then, you know, whatever it is so that she can get her email collection you know more organized by homework questions class quiz questions and notice she has a bunch of topics here see jason's more involved with some of those stuff um for instance please with the ssd and last time i had like 40 of them so it's not like i'm talking to one person here. um please put ssd accommodations accommodations in the title last time we had like 40 okay and one of them somehow didn't, and I have a little spreadsheet to make sure the SSD folks get double time on the, on the midterm and quizzes, and midterm and not quizzes, mid, you know, midterm and final. Okay, I missed one guy. I've never seen such, I mean, he, 
yeah, I missed it. It was my bad. But I mean, he called the assistant department head, the department head, the president of the university called the uh, president of the United States. He went to the Supreme Court. I mean, it was just like, oh my God, and hundreds of emails. So please be clear about your emails and then we can make sure everybody with, you know, for instance, SSD is in the spreadsheet and we don't have, don't miss anybody and you get um, prompt answers for your stuff. The problem, we get into the project, I'm sure a bunch of you all will have this. This will be more efficient for our, our team and you will get a more prompt and, and good response quickly. So we'll remind you of that. Um, when it gets into MATLAB itself, we have, this, this, may be, this may be expensed, expounded upon as the semester goes right now, we have three items. Um, MATLAB tutorials, you know, it's always like, how do I learn MATLAB? Okay, and so, well, some students might say, well, I can't find any information about MATLAB. Well, that's not the case. If we went into the, um, they can see MATLAB tutorials, right? Yeah. If, if we went into Google and went, Try Google and MATLAB help. I can't find, no. I would, I would guess there'd be, seriously, millions, not millions, but tens of millions, maybe a billion hits. What does a billion pieces of simple website do? It does nothing. I mean, it's such an overload of information because MATLAB is so popular. So we're going to give you more bite-sized pieces. That said, even this document is, how many pages, Jason? There's a whole bunch of stuff here. A whole bunch of stuff still probably will be it's not a billion but it's still a bit of an overload um but here's some of the getting started i mean the getting started i always like things if it, i well done getting started things some some of them aren't worth a damn but if if they're any good these and i think most of these are addressed to actually um matlab developed websites right not not some guy that came up with some bunch of incoherent junk so matrices and arrays there's going to be tons of questions array indexing all these topics that you see here we're going to get tons of questions there's some information okay now as we go back some of the other stuff that's on here these are two little things i put together and what i'll do is i'll start with this matlab intro much much less information this is a single pdf with you know it's maybe has 18 pages but some of the real basic matlab commands and then um, uh, get you going. And there's a list of commands which people. Now, last uh, again, an improvement of the website. Last time, this stuff was on the website, but because it was not on the front page and buried in some index with files, I had some students. I had some students that will tell me, you know, God, I love that introduction and that command thing you gave. It was really useful. I had other students, you know, week 15, and I talked about this. Said, you know, oh, where do you find that? I didn't even know that was there. I mean, not day one, week 15, you know, I didn't even know that was there. And I think that was it. So we're trying to, we can't put everything on the front front page, like that, but something that we want to make sure you you know it's there, we're going to put on the front page, okay? Like the email, like the, the stuff we have here. And this is in our judgment, of course. So let's see. E, 11, 12, 05. okay, good. So this document here is something I put together and start off with basic operations and matrices and all sorts of things. Um, so what I'm gonna do in the MATLAB part of things is we're gonna crank up MATLAB and do it. I mean, we're not gonna look at, you know, some kind of thing like this, I mean, but we're actually gonna crank MATLAB itself up and do it. So I assume I would suspect some of you don't have it have it cranked up ready to go today, but um, certainly by Friday everybody needs to have MATLAB to go. And there's no reason we can't click on MATLAB right here and now and start to get you oriented to it. Okay. Uh, I am sharing my screen, right? You're sharing the screen. Okay. So did MATLAB come up? Okay. So here's MATLAB. Let me. Let me kill, as a matter of fact, let me kill all of these. Get rid of them all. Oh, good God, I got a lot of things open here, huh? I thought that would get rid of all. Oh, that gets rid of all of these. Okay. And I'll see. Let's see. All right. 
All right, now, some of you are used to MATLAB, some of you have never used it, coming from all sorts of different environments. So I'm gonna start off slow with MATLAB. And I know some of the more advanced losers are go users are going, come on, man. But there's many, many students who, who have either not seen it or what they saw, they got, they were, got confused, really weren't good with it. So some of this first stuff might seem a little bit slow to you, okay? But don't worry, I promise it will get challenging if you're worried about that. I don't, don't know if anybody's worried about that. Anyway, this is the command window here in MATLAB where, and uh, Okay, this is your command window. And you can use the command window basically, if you want, as an advanced, basically a fancy calculator. You know, you can do a computation one plus two, and I don't know, what is that four or whatever the answer is supposed to be, oh, three, okay. You can probably check that out. So you can do all sorts of stuff in, in, the, in the workspace here. You know, the sign of three point, and, and MATLAB, as you suspect, will it, it knows and recognizes certainly the common, if not a whole lot of special functions. So if there's a, if there's a function that you've heard of, like obviously the trig functions or some other kind of fairly famous statistical or this, that, the other function, almost, almost 100% for sure MATLAB has it and will recognize it. It's just a matter of you using it. But anyway, you can do a whole bunch of computations. You can um, assign variables, x equal to one. And I like to do sim things symbolically, you know, assign symbols to things and do arithmetic. Don't just take one plus one, you know. Sometimes the students know, I know, but the first variable is one and two. Why do I wanna, why do I wanna do this? Look, Professor, X was one and Y two. Why don't I just say one plus two? Because this is a much better way to do things. Then if you later you want to change, um, you want to change X or Y to something else, or you use better for programming to assign things and don't, not to hard code numbers all the time. So I notice a few things here. Um, this thing called the workspace came up. Now, I and I put a command where I, I put clear all. I cleared all the workspace before I started, but note that there's um, the workspace is, is a list of your variables so far. Note I put x equals one, there it is at y equal two, and the output came out as an answer. Generally, you're gonna probably want your answer to something you can store as a variable to use it later in your computations. So you probably wanna say z is, is x plus y, not usually the way you'd use MATLAB, and now z here. If you don't assign something, it just calls it answer. All right, so anyway, you can go on like this forever, right? <clears throat> and dot, 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 dot. And, and you've done a whole bunch of work and all that stuff and, and right? And then you turn that lab off. And I think it turns, it takes, it takes a while to crank back up, but I'll try this anyway. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll do that. Okay, I killed MATLAB. And now I wanna start MATLAB again. That wasn't too long. Anyway, I've got some. Um, anyway, you say, well, what happened to my work? Professor, I put in all the workspace, it's empty. What happened to my work? I, I put in X and Y and Z, I did all sorts, I did hours of work, what the hell happened to it? Well, this isn't any good, you can't save it. So, if that was true, this software would be ridiculous, it's stupid. Obviously, there's, you could make what's called a little script file to save a collection of, of, of commands. So, home, and here's some options for, for some things. Now, a script file is a collection of commands. So, well, let's open a new script file. And there you go, it's, it's called right now, the very, very clear name called untitled. 
and I hope all of you name your codes on your Untitled 1, Untitled 2, Untitled 3 throughout your life. Uh, I'm just being sarcastic there, of course, to give it a better title, it would be nice. Um, and in here is probably where you do your work. It's called a script file. It's basically a collection of commands. So, you know, x equals two, y equals three, and we want to put z equal to x squared plus, oops, plus three times y. Okay. And, and we're going to have a whole collection. We, who knows? You might have three of them, might have hundreds. And certainly you want to save your work to be able to, to, to work on it in the future, to reuse it and whatever. And so now we have to save this. If we save this, now we'll have it at our disposal to crank back up. You have to save it. Let's see. Editor probably. Save. Save as. Now, what I'm going to do in this class is you get a look at my directory there. I, I have I have directories and subdirectories and all sorts of stuff because I have so much stuff. I'm going to form. I, I even have a downloads. There we go. Here's this. Here's the, okay. Right now. I'm going to put this in a directory. I'm going to put things in files in a directory. I'm going to call this. Uh, I want to call this. My, you got to put underscores in my first. I don't know, names, when you get into a physical problem, like you're doing um, a mechanical oscillator or something, names are a little easier to come up with because you'll call it mechanical oscillator with whatever. Um, when it's just a just generic demo, it's, I find names almost a little harder to come up with. My first name, that kind of, so you'll save it, I call it like that. And <clears throat> you will be able then to recover that once you, to, once you uh, turn off MATLAB there, you see. You'll have that at your disposal and you can continue on with your work there all right and so you're going to have you're going to have some extensive use of this thing this is called a, again it's called a script file which is nothing more than a savable collect collection of commands that you now how do you run this thing how do you run this thing you go to the editors now i'm, I'm going to try not to click real fast one thing that bothers me about have you ever gone to a software, somebody's describing us, trying to teach you some software, and they're all excited because they love it, and they go, click, 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 here, there, now. And you get some guys that's been using the software for 20, 25 years, and they're just clicking madly around, they're all excited about it, and they're just lost off the, off the go. I can't stand that. So I'm gonna try not to do that to you. So I'll try to go slow. Editor. And if you want to run the current script file, you put this arrow thing called run. Let's see what happens. Okay, I have to change the file, all right? Because it wants that thing there. Okay. And when you look at the results down here, in this case, I guess you could do a little bit this proportion here. As you see, it did what you commanded it to. You put it put x equal to two, y equal to three, and the result equals to thirteen. I suppose is the correct thing. Now, one there's all sorts of little commands you can do. For instance, I personally like to clear this screen before I go on to new computations. So I'll usually do C L C. That's clear the screen, and um, that's one that's sort of, I remember. Format short will just tighten these things up so you can see it more. Anyway, that's some like housekeeping stuff, to clean up stuff, and get things looking right before you do your computation. So let's rerun it. Editor, run again. So com format is it compact maybe? Format compact. 
bitter. Notice you got to practice over and over. Run. There we go. Okay, so CLC cleared all the other stuff off the screen. Compact, just tightened it up so we can see it. And there you see your work right there. All right. And then you can collect. So any of these commands, uh, creating a script file, running the script file, where things are, notice the values in here, all this stuff you need to do over and over. If you're going to, you know, learn to play something like a piano, you got to just endless hours, endless hours of the same simple things, the scales and the things. Just like here, keep trying, editor and the different things. Note, complex songs take a long time to learn, but just like here, you've got tons, thousands of options if you go through all the list of, of, of uh, tabs, or what do you call this, uh, uh, things up here. We will not use them all. We will teach you what you need to use. There's thousands and tens of thousands of commands. We will use a handful, several dozen, what would you say, couple dozen mainly uh, out of the hundred thousand, maybe literally less than 50 um, kind of command. But you need to get familiar. You need to use them over and over how to use them. Okay. So there you go. There's, there's your first little thing. You can basically use MATLAB like a calculator and you can save your work here and then continue to change it. So if you wanted to change it, I want to make Y a one now. Edit, run. <clears throat> and so I, I will try to go slow. If there's something important you need to do, like how to create a script file or how to run the script file, editor, run. I don't mind going at, over that over and over. Again, a few students get impatient. But I think the majority of the 200 students will be very appreciative of going slow and, and saying the same things over and over, repetition. All right, so from here, I was, gl I was glad I was able to get the introductory comments so I begin to orient you to here. So now, starting on Friday now, we're gonna dig into MATLAB. Make sure you have MATLAB cranked up, all right? And I'll save that one. And I mean, the first thing we're gonna do is come in here on Friday and say, hello, well, we're gonna get in MATLAB. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go click on the MATLAB icon like this. I'll show you what's the issue with that there. That's not my files, but anyway. Um, click on the MATLAB icon and start to do things. And hopefully by that time, you'll have MATLAB installed so if you wish which i think many students like to do they like to work along with me that is and if i go slow enough you could type in what i'm typing in and see if it works you don't have to because you can just watch and also these are recorded recorded so you can go back but i think most students prefer and most students get more out of it if they try to work along with me and in that regard again i will attempt slow i'm i mean you know, i'm old and slow anyway you know Somebody like Jason and Varsity, they're fast, you know. My, my kids rush up, you do this, that, and the other thing. Oh, whoa, 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 slow. What was that first thing? So you have the advantage that I, I'm, this, I'm this decrepit old man that's uh, slow with technology. That's in your advantage, and you all are young and adaptable. So anyway, we're out of time today, but come in Friday ready to crank up MATLAB and really start to learn it. We'll, oh, just a whole bunch of stuff to learn, okay? Tons of stuff to learn. And then we'll continue to, we'll learn basic things and we'll hone our skills practicing with them, you know? Um, you know, Z or W equals one comma nine, one semicolon nine. Let's see what happens there. Those are our last little thing. Ah, we just learned the, the colon operator. We'll do that. There's, anyway, lots and lots of things to learn. You see, you see what it did? one through nine, or made one through nine. There's tons of little MATLAB tools that are really, really useful and so, so useful that we're gonna teach them to you. Um, 
things. Anyway, so we're going to end right here. We can stay on the on the uh, Zoom lesson a little bit if anybody has a couple little questions. Otherwise, please uh, log in Friday. Log in a couple minutes early if you want to uh, share a pet. And and either and some people have pictures, or if you want to show any kind of pet, it can be any kind of thing. Or I suppose if you know, kind of like show and tell, if you got something interesting you did or whatever, you want to share that too, you know. But uh, um, we'll do that a few minutes before class starts. So anyway, welcome to the semester, and I hope everybody's going to enjoy this. Any questions here?